the Electoral College consists of 538 Electoral College votes, in which you need a majority or 270 Electoral College votes in order to win the presidency. However, what if the Electoral College is tied, or what if some faithless electors end up voting for some other candidates, making no candidate be able to actually clinch the presidency? In today's video, I will be analyzing how we could get to an electoral college tie and what would happen in such a scenario. Now first, how could we actually obtain an electoral college tie? Well, if we look at the map right now with the safe states voted for both sides, Joe Biden at 215 electoral college votes, Donald Trump at 219 electoral college votes. Now, these are what I consider the solid states, not necessarily states where both parties are guaranteed to win, but states that are pretty much solid for both categories. Now, you can see here Joe Biden needs pretty much uh, 55 electoral votes to be the president, while Donald Trump needs 51 electoral votes. Now, the most likely scenario here for Joe Biden and Donald Trump to reach a tie is if Trump is able to carry the four uh, what is considered the southern states, while Joe Biden is able to carry the four Rust Belt states. That gets Joe Biden to 269 electoral college votes, and Donald Trump at 268 electoral college votes. Now, Nebraska second in this scenario will have to go red. Now, that is probably the most unlikely of all of these characterizations. However, that characterization may not be as improbable as it may seem. Nebraska's lawmakers have tried to vote on the Trump-backed Electoral College change system, which would make the state winner-takes-all, which would give essentially Trump Nebraska's second district, because then there would be a statewide vote like all the other states, but not the congressional district votes. And naturally, Nebraska's five electoral votes will all go to Donald Trump. Now, this map is actually very, very likely if that change was to occur. Very simply, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are pulling about even in these Rust Belt states. However, in the Sun Belt states, for example, Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, Biden is consistently trailing. It makes a lot of sense if Joe Biden was to carry the Rust Belt 3 and Trump was to carry some of these southern states, including Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina. Now that brings us to the second part of the video. What happens in this scenario? While the Congress will end up deciding who wins the presidency, and Senate will decide who wins the vice presidency. Yes, there could be a Democratic president or Republican president and a vice president from the opposite party, which would be pretty much be terrifying by all measures. I've just mentioned whoever party is able to win the House is more than likely to win the presidency, right? Well, not exactly. You see, it's not every House member that has a vote. It's every delegation that has a vote. For example, a state like California with 53 representatives has one vote, while a state like Wyoming with just one representative also has a vote. So every state is completely equal. Now in this map, you will see that this is how the delegations would go, essentially which uh, party will control the House in every single state. Republicans are at 25 safe states, Democrats are at 12. So clearly, Republicans have the upper hand, right? Well, definitely. If the House was to choose the presidency, Republicans are at a significant advantage. However, there is another problem. What does 13 plus 12 plus 25 equal? Have three seconds, think about it. Well, it's 50. It's 50 states. And that number, if you divide it by 2, is 25. Which means if, theoretically, Democrats control all the remaining delegations, then it could be another tie in this tie tasterous. Now let's see the delegations. In the state of Oregon, it's very likely Democrats will end up controlling their delegation. I do believe, obviously, that Democrats will win Oregon. Oregon right now, Democrats have four seats, three Republicans two. The reason this could be a tie is because Republicans could flip Oregon six or Oregon's fourth, though that is highly unlikely. Going to the state of Nevada here, Democrats have three seats, Republicans have one, but it is a dummy mattered map. Republicans could end up winning at least another seat, but Democrats are still favored there. 
Now, in Arizona, Republicans have six seats to Democrats three. However, three seats on the Republicans hold are remarkably competitive, the first, the sixth, and to the lesser extent, the second congressional district. So that is still in the lead Republican cup lead to likely Republican column, I'm going to put it as lead. Colorado, it looks like the delegation there could be going to Democrats. Democrats control five seats there to Republicans three. I'm going to put it in the lead Democratic delegation here. New Mexico, probably a likely seat for Democrats. Alaska, Mary Pelta looks like she's on track to win re-election. I'm going to put it in the lead Democratic column. Now, if you look at in the delegation map right now, Republicans do control the delegation right now. So it looks like they have Donald Trump as president. Well, we have to wait and see. If you go down the map a little bit, you may see again some problems. In the state of Minnesota here, uh, we see that Democrats and Republicans are actually at a tie in delegation. Most likely, it's going to be a 4-4. Four four. Again, we see that scenario. If there is a tie, this, the state essentially temporarily forfeits their vote. But, each, but a candidate still needs 26 delegations to win the presidency. Iowa, we do have it as likely. There are currently four Republican representatives, though three of the districts are somewhat competitive. Michigan here, Democrats currently control delegation by just one seat. I'm going to put it in the tilt Democratic column. It could go either way, but Democrats are favored. Pennsylvania, similarly, Democrats are slightly favored with a one-seat advantage, though the delegation could go either way. Virginia, similarly, however, we see the Democratic seats here are a bit more safe, and Republicans also have a competitive seat of their own with Jen Kiggins. I'm going to put this in the lead, lead Democratic column. In the state of New Hampshire here, again, we do see that Democrats have two seats, and as well as that it made two seats. In the state of New Hampshire here, we have two relatively competitive, but still going to be pretty solidly Democratic seats. I'm going to put it as likely. While Maine, you could see Angus King lose by Downing. I'm going to put it as likely Democratic for their delegation, which means Democrats, in my projection, would win 22 delegations, while Republicans will win 27 delegations. However, it is again not that simple. There are anti-Trump Republicans who may actually vote for a Democrat over Trump in fear of his another four years. Technically, there could be anti-Trump Republicans that end up voting for Biden or vote for someone else and end up tying the delegations. However, it is more than likely that if the presidential election was to happen with a tie, that Trump ends up winning the presidential election in the end. However, in this scenario, it is also likely that Joe Biden will win the popular vote if the Electoral College is a tie. As I have previously mentioned, the Senate would choose the Vice President. Now, this is a Senate map with the no tassips filled in. We see that Democrats are at 43, Republicans are at 50, with 7 toss-up races. 51 is needed for control of the United States Senate, which means all Republicans need is one more Senate seat. Now, you can see here, this is my prediction. I do have Democratic incumbents winning in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. All three of these states here, they all have very popular Democratic incumbents. Now, Gretchen Whitmer's race in Michigan may be slightly closer because she is not running for re-election. Otherwise, I do expect the incumbents to win, and I expect the Democrat to win in the state of Michigan. I do have Democratic incumbents winning very, very narrowly in the states of Nevada and Arizona. Now, uh, it looks like in the state of Nevada, Jackie Rosen will narrowly hold on, while the state of Arizona, Ruben Guy Lego, the Democrat there, who is most likely to be nominated there, he is probably going to end up defeating Republican Carrie Lake, while Kristen Sinema, the incumbent Democrat, has announced she will not seek re-election. Going to the state of Montana here, I do have John Tester narrowly losing that race to the Republican nominee. While if we look at the state of Ohio here, I do have Bernie Monrito narrowly defeating Sharon Brown by a very close margin. Now, right now, according to my Senate prediction, I would have the Republican, whoever Trump chooses as the VP, to end up being the Vice President of the United States, which means well, we won't likely see a Democrat and a Republican occupy the president and vice president, which would be very, very chaotic. However, this is based on an assumption that Republicans end up winning the uh, the Senate as well. There could be a possibility, again, with the no toss-ups, we saw that Republicans were at 50. There is a possibility where Democrats end up winning the state of Montana, winning the state of Ohio, and end up having a 50-50 tie. Now, who would be vice president in that scenario? Well, we have a line of succession here. So, if the vice presidential 
is tied. We can see that the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, who is a Republican, obviously, will end up being the acting vice president until a vice presidential nominee is chosen. In summary, if the Electoral College was tied, I do believe that a Republican president and a Republican vice president would end up being elected. However, the mere possibility that there could be a Democratic president and a Republican vice president, or vice versa, is absolutely terrifying. I mean, in today's environment, that could be a big problem for another four years for the, for the American people. Furthermore, the mere possibility, again, that the deciding of voters in the uh, electorates here, where there could be a tie on who ends up winning the presidential election and who ends up winning the vice presidency is also a big problem. Anyways, that is my conclusion for today's video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.